learn how we can draw 10 different oxo acids of phosphorus and also name them. So this is something very similar to what we have done for oxo acids of sulfur and here also we'll be grouping this 10 oxo acids into three different classes based on their similarities in structure so that it becomes easier for us to draw them and name them. Before we move on to drawing these structures, we have got to remember some key points. So what are those key points? Firstly, all oxo acids of phosphorus will definitely have phosphorus at the center and around phosphorus there can be a maximum of 5 bonds. That is, phosphorus can have 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. A maximum of 5 bonds around it. This is a point to be remembered. The second point is that all oxo acids of phosphorus has a P double bond O unit. All the 10 oxo acids will have a P double bond O unit in that. Third one is similar to oxo acids of sulfur, which is the basicity. So unlike the oxo acids of sulfur, where all the structures were having a uniform dibasic nature, they, were, they all had two OH groups. But unlike that, this oxo acids of phosphorus, they show varying basicity. So their basicity can be either, they can be monobasic, they can be dibasic, tribasic or even some of them shows tetrabasicity. So based on this, which means that they can have 1 OH group, 2 OH group, 3 OH groups or even 4 OH groups in their whole structure. And finally, using these three points, we will be able to draw the structure and to name the structures, we will have to know the oxidation state of phosphorus and in oxo acids of phosphorus, phosphorus shows two lower oxidation states that is uh, plus 1 and plus 3. These two plus 1 and plus 3 are the lower oxidation states of phosphorus in oxo acids and also they show three higher oxidation states which is plus 4 plus 5 and plus 7. So, on total, they have 5 oxidation states out of which plus 1 and plus 3 are lower and plus 4, plus 5 and plus 7 are higher. And similar to oxo acids of sulfur, here also the lower ones would have their name ending with the word OUS. And the, higher, the ones with higher oxidation state would have their chemical name ending with the word IC. Right. And also, the first one of lower and the first one of higher, that is plus 1 and plus 4. The ones oxo acids with plus 1 or plus 4 as the oxidation state of sulfur, they will have the word hypo before their name. That would be like if it's plus 1, it will be hypophosphorus. If it's plus 4, it will be hypophosphoric here. So if you know these four points, we will be able to draw the structures of the 10 oxo acids. So let's put down the first four oxo acids out of the ten. That is the first class that shows similarities in their structure. So all of them will have a phosphorus at the center, right? That's the first point we saw. All of them will have a phosphorus at the center. And what did we see? All these phosphorus can have a maximum of five bonds. Five bonds for this. Five bonds for this. All of them can have a maximum of 5 bonds and we also saw the second point that all the oxo acids of phosphorus has a P double bond O unit. So a P double bond O unit is formed similarly oxygen, oxygen and oxygen. All of them now has 5 bonds around phosphorus with a P double bond O unit. Next is to understand how many OH units are to be added. For this we have to know the third point that is the basicity. So now H3PO2 is monobasic. Now, PO3 is dibasic, H3PO4 is tri, followed by H3PO5, which is also tribasic. Now, monobasic means it will have one OH unit. So, let me put down that OH unit here. Now, dibasic means it will have two OH units. So, let's put down that also here. Now, tribasic means all three would be OH units. The structure is also tribasic, which means that that will also be having all OH units. Okay, now the next thing look into this formula and the structure. Three hydrogens are there, but one of it is only satisfied. 
So the other two would go to your side is hydrogen and hydrogen. So three hydrogens are done. Two oxygens, one oxygen here, one oxygen here. Two oxygens are done and the phosphorus is also done. And now for this one, out of the three hydrogens, two of them are already given. So the third hydrogen would go here. Followed by one phosphorus and three oxygens. One, two, three. Done. Now here for this one, three hydrogens. One, two, three. All of them are done. One phosphorus is done and one, two, three, four. Four oxygens are also done. Now in this structure, H3PO5, three hydrogens are done. One oxygen is done. Four out of the five oxygens are done. And we saw that phosphorus can have a maximum of only five bonds, which means that I can't add an extra oxygen anywhere. But all I can do is I can make it a peroxo group with one O, P in between the POH unit, right? Like this. P, O, O, H. This is the only possibility that I can give. Okay. Now to name these structures, we have to know the oxidation state of the central phosphorus. So in this particular structure, phosphorus shows plus 1 oxidation state, whereas in this it will be in plus 3 oxidation state. Here it's in plus 5 oxidation state and in H3PO5, phosphorus is in plus 7 oxidation state. Now, plus 1 is a lower oxidation state. So we would have the term OUS. And plus 1 is the first one in the lower oxidation state. So the word hypo would be there in the start. So this would be hypophosphorus acid. Now the second one. This is a plus 3 oxidation state, which is also a lower oxidation state. And it does not have the word hypo. It is just phosphorus acid. Next, we have plus 5 oxidation state, which comes in the category of higher oxidation states. So, which means that they would end with the term ICIC. And this is orthophosphoric acid. And finally, we have the H3PO5 with plus 7 oxidation state and also it has a OO linkage which is a peroxo linkage, right? So this one is a peroxo monophosphoric acid. Peroxo monophosphoric acid. Let's look into the second class of octo acids that is H4P2O5, H4P2O6 and finally we have H4P2O7. So unlike the previous class which had only one phosphorus at the center, this class has two phosphorus for each structure. So moving to the structure of the first one that is H4P2O5. Definitely it has two phosphorus that are linked to each other. Yes, one phosphorus plus another phosphorus here. And the first key point was all the phosphorus will have a double bond O attached to it. It is a P double bond O unit is present. So this phosphorus has a P double bond O unit. Similarly, this phosphorus also has a P double bond O unit. Now apart from that, every phosphorus should have a maximum of 5 bonds should be there around it. 1, 2, 3. Done. So 4 and 5. Similarly, this phosphorus also. 1, 2, this common bond 3, 4 and 5. Now, to fill these, what do we need to know? We need to know the basicity. And this structure, H4P2O5, is a dibasic structure. Which means that it has two OH units, out of which one of it would go to this phosphorus and the other OH would be given to the second phosphorus. Now, compare this structure with the chemical formula. You will see that out of the four hydrogen atoms, two of them are only satisfied in the structure and the remaining two hydrogen can be equally distributed between the two phosphorus atoms. Now two phosphorus, that's done. And five oxygens are there. Now how many do we have in our structure? One, two, three, four. We have four and an extra five is needed. So where will that extra five go? It will be in between the phosphorus and rows. It will be like POP unit. So this is the structure of H4P2O5. 
Moving on to P2O6, we have phosphorus bonded to an area of phosphorus. Right? There will definitely be a double bono unit and a double bono unit all based on the key points we learned first. And now we need to have a total of 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Total of 5 units. And this particular structure, basicity, it is tetrabasic. Since it's tetrabasic, there will be a total of 4 OH units out of which 2 will go to the first phosphorus and 2 will go to the second phosphorus. So this goes like OH. OH, OH, and OH. Is the structure satisfied? Four hydrogens. One, two, three, four. All of them are done. Two phosphorus. That's also done. Then there's um, six oxygens. One, two, three, four, five, and six. That's also done. Now we move on to this last one in this class. That is H4P2O7. So how will we put that? This is also tetrabasic. Now we have phosphorus and phosphorus. Okay. Now, what else is there? There's a double bonded oxygen. There's a double bonded oxygen. Apart from that, we should have total of 5 around it. Since this is tetrabasic, 2 oxygen OH unit will go for the first phosphorus. Another two OH unit would go for the second phosphorus. So this is like OH and OH. Similarly, here also there is an OH and there is an OH. And now four hydrogens are done. One, two, three, four. Two phosphorus is done. One, two. And oxygen. So till seven are there. How many do we have in the structure right now? One, two, three, four, five, six. So we have an extra oxygen to be put somewhere and definitely the only way of putting the is between this P, P bond and it comes out to be P O P bond. So these are the structures here. Now let's write down their oxidation state for nemium. And here in this particular structure, phosphorus is in plus 3 oxidation state and in H4 P2O6, Phosphorus is in plus 4 oxidation state and in the final H4P2O7, phosphorus would be in plus 5 oxidation state. Now, plus 3 is the lower oxidation state, so it would have the term OUS at the end and this one is pyrophosphorus acid. Moving on to the next one, here we have plus 4 which comes in the category of higher oxidation state. So definitely IC would be there at the end of this uh, as its name. And since plus 4 is the first one in the higher oxidation state uh, series, so it will have the word hypo before it. So this one is hypophosphoric acid. Again, this is somewhat similar to the first one having POP bond. So, this also will be pyro unit. And plus 5 is in a higher state. So, this is pyrophosphoric acid. So, that's it for the second class of oxo acids. And now we have the last class of oxo acids with similar structures and in this third uh, class we have HPO3 groups that is HPO3 one time, HPO3 three times and HPO3 unit n times. So let's look into their structures. So definitely HPO3 will have a phosphorus. Put on the phosphorus and one double bond no unit will be there. Apart from that what else is there? Now this unit, total of 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, this is a monophasic structure, which means that it would have one OH. Now there is only one hydrogen that is done, one phosphorus that's also done, and three oxygens are there. One, two of them are done, so the third one will also be a double bonded one, P double bond O. So this particular structure has two P double bonded O's. Okay. Now 
we move on to the next one that is HPO3 three times and this one is a cyclic structure something similar to a benzene or a cyclohexane ring where we have alternate phosphorus and oxygen atoms so it's like oxygen phosphorus phosphorus oxygen oxygen phosphorus a cyclohexane ring with alternate phosphorus and oxygen atoms and on every phosphorus definitely there is a double bond O yes so it's like double bond O double bond O double bond O apart from that it's like every phosphorus 1 2 3 4 so there's a fifth bond this phosphorus also 1 2 3 4 so there's a fifth bond 1 2 3 4 bonds are there so there's a fifth bond and this is also monobasic so all of those fifth bonds would be satisfied by the OH units. Okay, this is HPO3 N, uh, three times, which is a cyclic structure. And now we come to N times, which is a polymeric structure. So it's a long chain polymer. Again, we have phosphorus with a double bond O and one OH. Okay, this is also monobasic. Apart from that, there's an oxygen, there's an oxygen, and this oxygen keeps repeating, connecting to the next structure. This whole thing keeps on repeating. This is the polymeric structure. Now, this particular one is what is the oxidation state? This H PO3 has phosphorus in plus 5 oxidation state, which means it's in a higher oxidation state, so it's definitely phosphoric. And this is metaphosphoric acid. And this one is a cyclic structure with three metaphosphoric acid units. So, this is cyclotrimetraphosphoric acid. Cyclotrimetraphosphoric acid. And finally, we have the polymer structure which is polymetaphosphoric acid. The last class and this is how we can easily draw and remember the first 10 oxo acids of phosphorus. I hope you understood the concept. Thank you so much.